Hi, welcome to my quick run through of Mint Tin Mini Skullduggery by Subquart Games. This is a cute little game which comes with a few components that fit in a mint tin. Uh, these are not the components you'll get, these are my quick prototype components, but it's to give you an idea. Uh, we have three little dice. We have a number of what will be skulls in the final version. Uh, you can see the skulls there. In the picture we've got some uh, some white skulls, some black skulls and some crystal skulls. Uh, these can be represented here by some uh, white crystals, some big red crystals and some blue crystals. And there's also going to be a coin uh, which will be flipped at certain times and come out and we'll see how that works in a minute. Um, I set this up for three players. It's hard to see them here because there's not much components to set up here. We have a one crystal skull, this is what I'm representing crystal skulls as, one crystal skull each. Um, and I'm just going to start playing to show you how it works. So the first thing you are meant to do is roll for uh, highest person roll uh, starts the game. Um, what I'll do is I'll just have this left player start the game for simplicity. The first thing we do is roll to discover what the spirit number is for this game, and it's going to be a five. And I'll show you why that is important when we roll. I'm going to start off with this player rolling. So the first thing to notice here, there are no fives, so he's not going to collect any points. You collect points if you roll fives. This isn't three of a kind, so nothing triggers on three of a kind. Uh, this isn't a low or a high straight, so nothing triggers here, and we'll see what happens if I roll any of those. So we go on to the second player. They rolled no fives or a roll or a triple. So here, this player has rolled two fives. Now, a single five rolled on its own is worth one point. Two fives is worth five points. If he rolls all three fives, that would be worth ten points. But, oh, that was a one. Sorry, I flipped that over. Um, if uh, another player wants to, they can spend their blue crystal skull to smash one of these dice. So let's say, uh, and it goes in turn order, player one is going to smash, they don't want this player to get five points, they're going to smash that one. Or shatter, that's the word, shatter. So this player uh, doesn't want to spend his crystal skull yet, so this player here is going to get one point for that one remaining skull. So let's give him one of these little point tokens, which will be skulls in the final version. Uh, that is locked now, but he can then keep rolling, uh, keeps rolling fives, he can collect the points. He collects a point here, if this player doesn't want to spend, no, he's not going to spend. So he gets one more point, so he's got two points now. Uh, he can keep rolling, so he's now got nothing. So that's the end of his turn, this goes back to supply. Player one who has no skull and no points gets a roll. He's rolled a two fives, okay. So they both have their skulls. I think he's going to spend his to stop him getting that. So he'll get one point. The other player, the player three, isn't going to spend theirs yet. So he's got a point. He's going to carry on rolling. And he's got nothing left. Okay, so that goes away. We move on to the second player, who again, there's no, no things representing him at the moment. So he's rolled nothing. Moves on. He's rolled no fives or anything else. He's got nothing. Player two. He's rolled nothing. Three. He's rolled nothing. And it will sometimes go like this, where you roll another spirit number for quite a few turns. Okay, let's see if we get something exciting. Ah, look. So that's a low straight. So what happens with a low straight is that the lowest, tied for lowest uh, scoring players each gain a point. So we can see that middle player with nothing here is the lowest player. He will gain a point from the supply or from the ethereal realm, to be uh, nice and thematic about it. Uh, so he, uh, player three has rolled no um, five, so he has to finish his turn. So player one gets one. Does anyone want to smash it with a skull? No, they're not going to waste their skull yet. He gets that, he gets to roll again. One, two, six is nothing. So player two is on one point. One, two, four, that's nothing. Player three, is anyone with his crystal skull left? Two, four, six, no. Player one. Five, six, six there, so he has one five there, so he will collect a point. No one's going to spend their skull to smash that. And that's nothing. So, player two. One, three, four, nothing happens. Player three. Two, four, six, nothing happens. Player one again. Five, six, six again, same as he had last time. Uh, I think player three is going to spend their skull now to smash that one. They want to stop them getting that. So, he's got no. Um, spirit points left, he can't do any more rolling, so his turn is over. He collects no points. So he's got 366, six, nothing for him. 145, so he gets a point, no one has got any 
crystal skulls left, so they can't do any more shattering at the moment. And that's unfortunate because he now has a double five, which means he's going to get five points. So he's got another big chunky one. Five, six, seven, so he's on eight points uh, to three to one at the moment. And he gets to roll again still. He doesn't have to roll if he doesn't want to, but he's going to carry on. And there are reasons why you might not want to roll. So he's got nothing. I think I might have rolled twice for him there. Uh, he has nothing. Uh, three, six, six is nothing. One and six is nothing. And three, four, nothing. Two, two, three is nothing. Let's have something interesting about that. Well, I'm going to cheat here. Let's say he's rolled three sixes. So what happens on a triple is if you can collect points, you collect the points. If you don't have your crystal skull, you can collect back your crystal skull from the ethereal realm, which he's going to do now. If he already had his crystal skull and he didn't get any points, then the coin will come out. And this is called, let me look it up for you for the proper name for this. Um, this is the Winged Death Head coin, and this will be a special stamped coin. This I'm just using the coin from Minton Mini Apocalypse. Um, if that hasn't happened, we'll see if that actually happens. So let's pretend he rolled three sixes, he gets to claim his Crystal Skull out from the ether. But he didn't roll five, so he carries on with player one. So player one's got nothing. Uh, player two's got nothing. Two, four, four, nothing. So let's try and get a high straight, shall we? Oh, he had a five, so he is going to gain a point. At last, he gains a point. He gets another point. So he's now got five. He's going to change those in for a big one. Two, four, six. Nothing for him. Okay, that's nothing. Ah, here we go. So, something interesting now. This is a high straight, and he has a five. So we deal with the straight first. So the straight, whoever has the most points, loses a point. And if it's tied, they both lose. So you can see here we've got five, one to, to eight. So he's going to lose a point. Gets it sucked back into the ethereal realm. But he has a five, so he's actually going to gain the point back anyway. So we roll again. One, three, five. He gets another point. He's the only one with a crystal skull at the moment. So that's a uh, skull to spend. He can smash his own if he wants to. And I'll explain why you might want to do that when we get near the scoring. Oh, look, a natural triple two. So... He can't claim points, he already has his skull back, so the, the winged death coin, head coin, comes out. Where is it? There we go. So I'm going to place that near the middle. Let me zoom out a bit and you can see better. If this happens again, and no one's got rid of this coin, then skullduggery occurs. We'll see if skullduggery occurs at some point. Now people can spend their crystal skull to get rid of that coin before their first roll, but we'll see if that happens. He's not going to, he hasn't got one to spend. But he has rolled a five, so he gains a point. He's on six points. And that's it for him. It's so one, two, and two. Close to a low straight, but not good enough. It has happened. It's a triple four. He can't collect any points. He can't um, spin his skull now, because he's already started his roll. He can't claim one back. The coin flips over. And skullduggery has occurred. What happens? All the players rotate their points to the next player. Now let me see which direction they rotate them in. I'm just going to check the rules quickly. Um, they pass their points to the player on their left. So player one goes to player three, player two goes to player one, and player three goes to player two. So player two, quite happy about that. He's now gone from one to nine points. Uh, player three, not quite so happy. Player one, definitely not happy. Uh, you keep your crystal skull though. Uh, it's just the points that swap over. This coin now gets banished back to the ethereal realm. He's done with his roll because he's got nothing. So, uh, one, three, six, nothing. Player two's looking good now, isn't he? Oh, he has to look. And I think, yeah, player three's going to spend a skull to smash that one to stop him doing anything else. So that's prevented him from doing anything or getting points. Two, three, four. Now that's a run, but it's not a low or high straight. One, two, six, nothing. And there we go, there's a point. For him, he's now got 10 points, so let's change that in for another 10. So he's got 10. The game will end when someone reaches exactly 15 points. And I'll hopefully show what happens if someone goes over 15 points. So here's a 5, no one has any skulls to uh, smash it, so he gains a point. And that's it for him. 
everyone's hoping for something. Oh, look at that, he's got a double. So no one has any crystal skulls. So he's going to get a nice sweet five points for that, and he gets to carry on rolling. He's on it again, he's got another double. He's going to close now, he's got 11 points. Now, let's see if he can do it again. Oh, he has one five, so he's now on 12 points. Let's see if I can simulate a uh, going bust. So what happens if, if you get, if I, for example, rolled uh, two fives at this point, he would usually gain five points for that, but that takes him over 15, and you can't go over because you bust. He would lose that point, and it would pass his turn to the next player. So sometimes he may not want to actually carry on rolling and push his luck. If he had a crystal skull, he might want to then smash that die and then just keep that one so he can keep pushing up. If he didn't roll that, so that's cheating, so let's carry on. Oh, so you've got nothing. One, four, three, three, four. Player two gets nothing at all. Player three, who's on 12 points, gets nothing. Back to player one. Nothing at 10. Uh, nothing for player two. Nothing for player three. Player one has got an extra one. He's on 14. He needs one more point to win. Let's see if he does it. No, but look, he gets a low straight, which means the person with the lowest points gains a point, and that is player two. Player two is up to 11. And player two's turn. We're getting close now. Oh, now, here's an example. So he's got a double. That would get him five points. That pushes him to 16. He busts. He loses that and loses his turn. Unfortunate for him. So that was a that was actually a six on not that. So nothing for player three. Player one needs one five to do the win. And he's got it, but we deal first with the fact that this is a high straight. He has the most points among them. He loses a point. Sucked back into the ethereal realm. But he can carry on rolling. He'll gain a point for that, so he effectively had a, no effect on him. So that's one more five. He's done it. There we go. Player one has won. And that is a quick run-through of a full game of Mint Tin Mini Skullduggery, which is on Kickstarter. So I hope you enjoyed it.